Hey everyone, welcome to The Period Party. This is Nicole. On this episode, we're talking all about using Chinese medicine at home with my friend Heidi Brockmeyer, an acupuncturist, herbalist, and fertility specialist with a background in Chinese medicine. She has over 10 years of experience helping women grow their families, and she supported hundreds of women in her clinic in San Diego, and of course, thousands of women around the world in her online community. Heidi focuses on helping women create total fertility wellness by preparing the mind, body, and spirit for fertility and pregnancy through her virtual fertility self acupressure program. Welcome, Heidi. I'm so excited you're here. Thanks, Nicole. I'm so excited to be here. How fun. A period party. Love it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Tell me about it. I know. We figure that this stuff is serious enough as it is, and we need to make it a little bit lighthearted. Absolutely. Mm, definitely. So today we're going to be talking all about, you know, just using Chinese medicine at home, which you are the only person I know who advocates for this, which I think is really awesome. And I know that you are a huge advocate also of being an active participant to reach your healthcare goals. So I would love to hear about that because, of course, I advocate for that as well, too. And I'm a big proponent of women really getting to know their bodies. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it started in my clinic, really, because women are, you know, always asking me, okay, well, what else can I do? What can I do at home? What can I do at home? And a lot of times, you know, um, as a practitioner of Chinese medicine, acupuncturist, you know, they don't necessarily have time to tell you all of these tools that you can use at home, especially when some of the, the tools that are a little more um, sophisticated and, you know, you really need to be taught them. It's not as simple as, oh, you know, just take a bath or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but when, when someone's in your clinic for a treatment, your, your, your time is focused on giving them the treatment. And so you don't necessarily have time to give them all these tools, but when, um, when women do follow up with their treatments and they are taking an active role in their treatment plan in between the appointments, you see such a difference in their progress, in the results that they're getting, um, you know, both with their fertility goals, but also with them feeling so much more empowered in the process, and that relieves so much stress for them. So, you know, there's also a mentality, I think, in our culture that it, when it comes to our health, we are kind of, we're, we sort of take a, a backseat role to it. And instead, we just, we go to a doctor and we kind of put it all in their hands and say like, ah, oh, fix me, something's wrong. And the doctor's kind of like, well, I'll tell you what's wrong with your body. And it's not, uh, and that's not really a good balance. Certainly, you know, Western medicine, medicine and, and professional um healthcare professionals, whether it's a, you know, a Western medical doctor or a naturopath or uh, an acupuncturist, they all are, play very necessary roles, like supporting roles and partnering to, uh, to improve whatever situation, meet your healthcare goals. But really, you should be the primary um, practitioner for yourself. It's up to you to be in touch with your body and take responsibility and accountability and understanding for your, um, of your body and, and be in touch with it. And then you can advocate for yourself much better with your healthcare practitioners, as well as, you know, not, not rely on them as much. Cause a lot of times, you know, we don't go to a doctor in, until these alarm bells are going off and things have gotten really, really wrong. And, and then it's like, ah, you know, what can I do now? But the idea is right. that when you're playing an active role, you're hopefully not getting to this point where it's, it's your, you know, things have gone really wrong and, um, and you're in better touch with your body and you can understand the signals, the feedback that your body is giving it and, and actually have tools at home to respond to those signals and say, okay, you know, my body's telling me I need to rest more. My body's telling me that I need to eat differently. My body's telling me I can do, I need to do some acupressure and balance myself in this way. And this is going to help. Mm. So I think, you know, it's a lot about changing that mindset and, and it's, it's just, it's a, a, such a more empowering mindset from going to um, thinking of yourself as like a victim of your health or your disease, you know, thinking that you're diseased and something's wrong with you to actually uh, being empowered and, and, and playing a role in keeping yourself balanced. Yes. I love that so much because that's basically my stance on this as well, as you know. And I, you know, I think that we, 
I've always said this, that we tend to take our bodies to the doctor like we would take our car to the mechanic because we really don't have a fundamental understanding of how they function. And I think that this is truly the first step in healing your imbalances or your symptoms or conditions or whatever it is you're experiencing is that is just that is to like you said become this more active participant in your health and your health care totally I love that metaphor too I'm gonna have to use that sometime but I'll give you credit (laughs) (laughs) why thank you I know it's so funny though because it really is like that I mean I remember the days when I, I live in New York so I don't have a car but I do remember those days quite well and if there was something wrong I was in complete panic and immediately trying to find someone, anyone to help me fix the problem. And I remember those days well, too, when it came to my body. <laughs> it was very similar. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think especially for women where it's, it's amazing how ignorant we are, or how, especially growing up, we're just not taught. It's sort of taboo talking about periods and cervical mucus, discharge, cramps it's like ew it's like it's we're ashamed for it even Mm -hmm. and then you know a lot of the treatment is like oh well as you know just take birth control pill or whatever just to like mask those symptoms and carry on right so let's talk a little bit about uh more moving into chinese medicine and the fact that you say it's more than acupuncture and i think that when we think of chinese medicine we think of acupuncture and only that so i'd love to hear what other tools there are yeah absolutely i know everybody that's what people think of they think acupuncture is Chinese medicine, which is understandable. We refer to Chinese medicine practitioners as acupuncturists. But acupuncture is just one of the tools of Chinese medicine. It's kind of like prescribing drugs as one of the tools of a medical doctor or, you know, removing a mole is one of the tools of a a medical doctor. But that's Mm -hmm. not what the medicine is. Um, So, Chinese medicine itself is a, is, a, is a system. So it's a system of diagnosing, determining uh, what pattern somebody might have, like how they're out of balance, what that imbalance pattern is, and then deciding from there, okay, how do we get you back into balance? So Chinese medicine doesn't treat the disease. It treats the person and, and their particular imbalance. So it's, you know, the, the idea is to bring that person back into balance and understanding the flow of energy and which organ system may be out of balance and so forth. So to do this, acupuncture is one of the tools that can stimulate specific points on the body and guide that energy through the acupuncture or acupressure meridians. They're the same, same points, same channels, Mm -hmm. um, and um, guide the energy to specific organ systems um, or with specific goals in mind for the body. So you can use, do this with an acupuncture needle or you can do it with your fingers using acupressure. And when you stimulate the points with your fingers, you can accomplish the same goals. There, you can also stimulate the points with something called moxa therapy. So mm-hmm. that's when you um, you take an herb. It's a, it's a it's a moxa stick usually, and it, it almost looks like a cigar. And you light it on fire, and, you, and so you get an ember going on. You don't. It's not going to be stay on fire. You have an ember, and you warm that herb over specific areas of your body or specific acupressure points. And so that is infusing that point with uh, both warmth and the energy of that herb to help move the blood and bring more energy into the body to improve uh, functioning, uh, whether that's moving blood or... um, the uh, stimulating your digestion so that your body's able to make more healthy blood cells. Uh, so it depends on the function, but it, but the, it, it gives your body a boost as well as that warmth, which is really helpful, especially for fertility and for women's health issues. Mm. Um, because there's a lot of stagnant blood in, in the uterus and, um, Uh, In Chinese medicine, a lot of times we say that infertility is caused by cold in the uterus. So that moxa therapy is really effective at helping to warm up the uterus. So those are two really powerful therapies. They're a little bit more sophisticated, so they need take some training to learn how to do those, um, you know, or some instruction to learn how to do those. But then there's also meditation, for example. Meditation is one of the the tools of Chinese medicine. Um, Meditating itself, obviously, as you know, and most people know 
by now it just calms the nervous system so that alone is going to allow the flow of chi throughout your body to be in better balance and then you can get even fancier and you can use specific meditations where you're guiding the energy through your body you're you're visualizing it going through certain acupressure channels. So for instance, you can imagine it flowing smoothly through a couple of channels that circulate directly to your reproductive organs for balancing your hormones and, and so forth. There's right. also exercise. Um, it's called Qigong. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a China, the Chinese medicine style of yoga. And those exercises will guide the energy through the acupressure channels of your body to help keep it in balance. There's food therapy and Chinese herbs and also massage. Um, the Chinese style massage is called Qigong, or it's called Tui Na. So you're also guiding energy. You're using those acupressure points. You're guiding energy along the channels. Um, it's, so it's all, all of these tools are, are, are keeping the, 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 um, the system in mind, the foundation, the, um, the, the theory of Chinese medicine in mind. So these are just the tools to manipulate this energy the way that you want it to be balanced. But, but understanding the theory of Chinese medicine. So basically, you know, one of the principal foundations of Chinese medicine is that when you have free flow, you have health. When you have a blockage, you have disease. So that's one of the easiest ways to kind of convey, you know, what the goal is in Chinese medicine, what it all boils down to. Right. Yeah, that makes complete sense. I have used, I mean, acupuncture was really what got me onto this whole journey of health and wellness in the first place. So I'm a huge proponent of it. I'm curious, though, for women who have never tried it before and or maybe struggling with infertility or some other menstrual condition that is impacting their quality of life. Like what would you, what do you say to women who haven't tried it and are skeptical or just feel very unsure about it as, as an option for them? Oh goodness. Well, I mean, it is just, you, you got to try it. Leave the wines, you know, you have nothing to lose really. And for women's health issues, I guess I'll tell a story when I was in, uh, in school for Chinese medicine, acupuncture, you know, of course I believed in it and I liked it, but I remember I had pretty bad cramps one day and I was just feeling just crappy. And so I looked in one of, one of the, like the textbooks that we learned from and it, and I looked up, okay, what's, what's a protocol here for menstrual cramps? And I, you know, and I, you know, I was cranky, headachy, all of it just felt bad. And so I put in these points, um, it was a pretty simple protocol, this one. And just within minutes, I was relaxed. Uh, I was, I felt great. My cramps went away. And I felt, I went from feeling cranky and uptight to feeling like, oh, everything's <laughs> just fine. You were onto like, something, clearly. Yeah. I'm like, this is no joke. And, and when it comes to women's health, our, our hormonal health, our periods, dysmenorrhea and so forth, I mean, acupuncture and Chinese medicine and acupressure, it's just so effective. And it's just so good for our bodies. I mean, I feel I wish that, you know, all girls right, you know, right around the time that they're getting their period, or, you know, even before that, and starting to get hormonal, will you know, their, their parents will take them to get acupuncture and to practice Chinese medicine, because it will make a huge difference. Because it's, a, you know, from now all the way through menopause, because if they have a regular period, they're going to go on the pill, then that's going to make things worse. And they can have endocrine issues later, as I know, you you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, possibly fertility issues and go on more fertility drugs and then have horrible menopause and possibly early menopause. Yeah. So it is, it is a solution. And, you know, I think the biggest, the, you know, the, what might hold somebody back the most would be the fear of needles. But it, really, it's just, it's one of those things that, yes, it does sound like a form of torture, but I, you, you just have to experience it to realize it's actually an, a deep relaxation that you will not experience from anything else. Mm. Maybe some, maybe some drug, but <laughs> no kidding. I feel the same way. Free, you know, and deep relaxation. Yeah. I 100% agree with that. Okay, so moving on, how about 
uh, Chinese medicine being really powerful for affecting deep changes in our bodies. When it comes back to something as multifaceted and deep rooted as infertility, I think that women are, you know, they they want to try everything, obviously. But you know, why is it that Chinese medicine works so well for for the for issues related to our uterus? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, you know, because Chinese medicine really recognizes that um, the whole body is connected, you know, so your lungs, the health of your lungs, the health of your heart, the health of your liver, your kidney system, all, and of course, your digestion are, are all playing major supporting roles in your fertility. So, you know, it's all connected. Um, and not only that, but also the health of your mind and your emotions. So, everything is connected. So let's say you're having a day where you're just really irritable and you feel like you're getting angry easy, easily, then, then that would be a symptom of your liver system being out of balance. And, the, and if, let's say, you're having a lot of PMS symptoms like breast tenderness and cramping and bloating. And um, so that would be a symptom of a liver imbalance. And when I say liver imbalance from a Chinese medicine perspective, I don't literally mean your liver. If I say kidney imbalance, I don't literally mean your kidney. It can include your liver or your kidneys, but it's really um, it, it's, it's a, a, a whole system, not just that organ. Mm. And so, China, so if you have a liver imbalance, that may be caused because of anger. Let's say you're, you know, you've been angry with your I don't know, mother. And, um, but you really, you're not dealing with it. You're not acknowledging it. You're not processing it. You're not reflecting on it. You're not dealing with, with it in a healthy way. And you're just kind of repressing it. And you're, and this, it's sort of just, you know, you're inside, you're fuming or whatever it may be. You're just not in touch with it. Then that's going to cause physical issues that's going to affect your body physically and um and then you could have these liver imbalances on the contrary you could have a like a physical liver imbalance and then you're starting to feel angry you're like gosh why am i like snappy with my husband he's not doing anything why do i feel like this so chinese medicine understands how it all works together how your thoughts work together with your body, how your emotions work together with your body, how your physical body affects your emotions. It's, it's all part of the same thing. It's not separate. So you can balance your emotions and that will help to balance your physical body. You can balance your physical body and that's going to help balance your emotions. So I think Chinese medicine understands this uh, better than any other medical system out there really in, in depth. And, but it's, it, I'm making it sound probably more complicated than it is, but when you know some of the basic principles, you can just automatically have such a deeper understanding of yourself and what's going on with you and your body, you know, as my, my therapist always says, your body never lies. So our mind plays trick on, tricks on us all the time and, you know, can confuse us. But if we check in with our bodies, you know, it, it, we can, we can feel like, Oh, what, you know, like I'm feeling something, what's going on here. And it can give us clues as to what your body needs on a physical level and also what's going on with you mentally and emotionally. And I think when you really start to pay attention to how everything's tied together, you're just able to take more control over your health. It just makes you much more self-aware on all levels and gives you more control over what's going on as opposed to you just not having no idea that you're, you know, you, you have, have like some stomach pain and you think that's all it is, a stomach pain. Should I go to the doctor and get on a pill to take care of the stomach pain? And you're completely oblivious to the fact that, wait a minute, this stomach pain happened at the same time that, you know, I started having problems at work or whatever. And, you know, you're not using you know, stress management tools and or other holistic tools to help um, to support you on all those levels. Right. I, yeah, I feel like Chinese medicine is the original holistic medicine approach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But it's old school. It gets props for that. It <laughs> really does. Yeah, I know. Well, I think that when people are questioning it and wondering whether it can be helpful to them, you know, I always say that this is literally an ancient practice. It's an ancient form of medicine. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. absolutely an ancient traditional medicine. Yeah. It, it, it was originally... Um, it had shamanic roots 
Um, so it goes way, way back. So what about acupressure? Because I think there's probably a little bit of confusion as to what that is and you know what, how you do that. And you're unique in that you're an acupuncturist in San Diego, but you have a program that helps women all over the world uh, by doing acupressure on themselves. So I'm just really curious about how you do that, like how acupressure works and how you teach people to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love acupressure because, you know, it started, I'll, if I have something wrong with me, I'm like, uh, I don't even think twice. I know I'm like, ooh, you know, I feel like I'm, uh, I have a cold coming on. I'm feeling kind of run down. Let me push on these points. And I'm like, man, I'm so lucky that I know which points I can push on in my body to help me ward off a cold or to help with my menstrual cramps or help with this headache that I'm getting. Yeah. Every, you know, everybody should know this. It's like we have this medicine cabinet that is our body <laughs> right at our fingertips. And of course, for fertility purposes, you know, a lot of women or for, you know, if you're having a, a, lot of, a lot of period issues and cycle issues in general, because Chinese medicine is so effective, the acupressure is such a great tool because you can do it every single day. You can do it any time of the day. It's, you know, it's convenient. You can do it anywhere. And a lot of women that have more severe issues, especially on the fertility you know, path, they need to be doing something more than going to their acupuncturist one time a week or you know, you know, fit, changing their diet. In fact, the acupressure helps to make all of those efforts all the more effective. So you know, it's not just changing your diet, but also your body's ability to assimilate that nutrition. So you could be eating really healthy, but your body could be better at actually taking that food and turning it into nutrients that the body can use to build hormones and so forth. So that's what really inspired me to start teaching women how to do acupressure. You can Google points and so forth and kind of dabble in it, and that's great. But then, you know, obviously it can be really more sophisticated and complex than that. So, for instance, in my acupressure program, you know, I really preach about, and I'm sure you can get on board with this, supporting each phase of the menstrual cycle. Yeah. And so... You know, in Chinese medicine, there's a different goal for each phase. Um, you know, the, during the follicular phase, obviously, you're wanting to help mature that follicle and really build up the body leading up to ovulation. And then ovulation, you got all sorts of stuff going on. You know, things are moving and moving and shaking and, and <laughs> you need the warmth. The, <laughs> the progesterone needs to do its thing and warm up the body and so forth. So there's different goals. So I teach protocols that can be used at different phases of the cycle to support the cycle because whether you're trying to conceive or whether you're wanting a healthy period for the quality, your quality of life and health, uh, the first goal is to get a regular cycle and balance those hormones. So you can use combinations of acupressure points together to to make the the acupressure more powerful more effective so for instance let's say it's ovulation time and you need to warm up the body because you're not you don't have enough progesterone you need to move blood because the you need to make sure that that follicle can be released and that the fallopian tubes will be open and that you're getting good blood flow to your uterus. And, um, you know, so you can use one point that's going to help the guide, direct the energy to your reproductive organs. And you can use it in combination with another point that's going to help to move the blood. And then you can use it with another point that's going to help the body produce uh, warming hormones like progesterone. So, um, you know, this is, this is what I love to teach so that women do it, can do it at home on, on a regular basis. And, you know, women are always like, it, they feel more empowered when they can actually like take an active role. Mm -hmm. And what's great about it is it's something that's also stress relieving while they, after they do acupressure, they're like, oh, you know, I feel more relaxed now. And they say, wow, this is really cool. I'm getting to know my body in a completely different level, like know the energetics of it. That is awesome getting to know the energetics of your body. I think that that's priceless. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I do so too. <laughs> yeah. I, so I'm really curious about the acupressure having an effect on regulating your cycle, uh, maybe even working on your fertility. I assume it's the same mechanism as acupuncture. Is that right? 
Yeah, it's very similar. Obviously, you know, when you go to an acupuncturist, they're going to give a very customized treatment based on what pattern they've decided you you are, what what your imbalance is. And so they've decided, okay, this is their particular imbalance. So this is how I need to support them to get back in a balance. Then they're also going to take into consideration any, you know, new symptoms you might have. If you come in with a headache that day, they're going to want to relieve that headache for you. And, um, they're going to be very objective about your situation, whereas you're going to be more subjective. So they're going to be, you know, they play a very important role too, of course. It's not like one substitutes the other. They're just different. They have different pros and cons, you know, the, uh, but with acupressure, you, you're, you're, it's subjective. You're giving yourself the treatment and, you know, the protocols that, that I teach, they're general protocols based on the most common imbalances that I see with women in their cycles and also what needs to be supported for all women at each phase of their menstrual cycle. Mm. So, but the advantage is that the woman can do it every day and really be consistent with supporting her body. Right. Women really need to be more focused on that, to be to bring in more body awareness so that they can thrive in all areas of their life. And it sounds like that's exactly what you help them do with acupressure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's like your work, Nicole, just like you said, thriving in all areas of their life, whether you're trying to conceive or not. And obviously, that's, that's a really important area to thrive in. But you know, if our cycles are out of whack, our lives are out of whack. I'm you kidding, know? right? It's so true. It, really com- it all comes back to a, to that for, for women. We need to be, our cycles and hormones need to be balanced to, to thrive. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit more about your acupressure program. I'm so curious about it. Yeah, I would love to. Um, it's called Total Fertility Wellness, and it is for it's focused on fertility, obviously, and for women that are trying to conceive naturally or with fertility treatments, whether it's IUI or in vitro or frozen embryo transfer or donor egg cycle. The program can be used for any situation because usually it's a combination of the two. Somebody may be trying naturally for a while and then end up going to IVF. So usually they want to try naturally, and if it and then and obviously, if it doesn't work, they might seek out fertility treatment. Or if somebody, a woman already knows she's doing fertility treatment, she's going to have some natural cycles before she does the fertility treatment cycle. Mm. And so, you know, the, the number one goal that I teach women is to first balance your cycle. Because that, when you have a balanced cycle, then, then you're much, your body is ready for fertility for, or for pregnancy. Okay. And, you know, I also teach that the, you want to prepare, take time to prepare before you enter a fertility treatment cycle, whether it's IUI or IVF, and you still want to focus on balancing your cycle and balancing your hormones, because then you're going to have a better response to that fertility treatment, to the drugs and so forth. And your body will also still be better prepared for pregnancy. But besides just uh, supporting each phase of your menstrual cycle, so, you know, I'm talking, and, and I, I go with four phases. So there's your period, and then there's pre-ovulation, which is when the, the follicular phase, and then there's the ovulatory phase, and then there's the premenstrual phase or implantation phase, mm-hmm. depending if you're pregnant, obviously. But what's also important to remember is that all systems support your fertility. So digestion feeds your fertility. From a Chinese medicine perspective, the liver plays a huge role in hormone balance. Yeah. Balancing. Um, your heart obviously plays a huge role in communication. Or, I'm sorry, not communication, but um, circulation. Mm-hmm. But it also play, it communicates with your ovaries. Sounds good. <laughs> Um, there is a a connection between the heart and the uterus so that's a little more like esoteric like a little more mystical look uh, uh, viewpoint but there's that as well and then your lungs you know from in Chinese medicine your lungs are responsible for your immune system that plays a huge role in in your fertility because if your immune system is compromised you can have all sorts of problems autoimmune issues, endometriosis, the body attacking the embryos, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the acupressure protocols uh, in the program are meant for uh, balancing your hormones and your cycle 
uh, increasing circulation to your reproductive organs and also balancing your other systems to support your fertility, to not only support your fertility, but to not drain your fertility and take away from it. And all of those elements are really important. Wow, that sounds wonderful. Can you tell us how everyone can find you? Yeah, so they can go to my website, HeidiBrockmeyer.com, and there's a lot of resources there, so they're welcome to, to check it out. There's blog, I have a fertility TV YouTube channel as well, and a lot of blog posts with all sorts of good info. Awesome. And just so you know, you can find the link to Heidi's at-home acupressure program at the link below in the show notes. All right, that wraps it up for today's episode. Join us again next week for more Girl Talk Gone Menstrual. In the meantime, if your hormones are screaming for more, be sure to check out our previous period party episodes. And of course, if you really love what you hear, please take a moment to rate the podcast on iTunes. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Heidi, for coming on the show and sharing all of your valuable information on acupuncture and acupressure for fertility. Thank you so much for having me, Nicole. It was so much fun. Awesome. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye.